not a political scientist <laughs> or a social scientist. I'm an engineer. One thing that was common among all the talks we had today is that we need technical expertise to handle the projects that we are trying to develop. And that is where the engineer becomes very, very indispensable. So I'm called Augustine Mofo. I live in Vinland and I studied here in uh, Nora Westphalen in Duisburg. And I did my PhD at the Technical University in Braunschweig. So I work now at TISA, that is, that is a EADS. And I had a laboratory that qualifies devices uh, for space application. Um, I travel a lot, I give a lot of lectures, I train Chinese engineers also, uh, because they are, they are working on space projects, so I go there all the time to, to build them up, and they are succeeding because this time around they were able to launch, to send people to space, and they came back with success. Cameroon has a very solid uh, background education from primary school right up to high school. And when you go to the university, many of them are there now. And people used to go to study physics, physics, chemi, histoire, and the rest. What has been lacking is the real application-oriented education. We don't have. We are struggling to have it now. And uh, to be able to apply these things that we learn into tangible products and services, we need to to change our mentality somehow so that we can see the problems. And my motivation comes from the fact that when I, when I came to Germany after the language course, I've been here for more than 15 years, two or 16 years. After the language course, I went to university in Duisburg to study in the Faculty of Electrical Engineering. And there was a course called Grundlagen der Technischen Informatik. There was a practical. So I went to the, um, the practical test it was programming, it was a language called Pascal. Then I failed. I mean, it was the first time I failed a test in my life, honestly. <laughs> then I asked myself if I chose the wrong course or not. <laughs> and I almost uh, abandoned it. Then I said, no, I'm Cameroonian. I have to get through with it. And I went and read and read and came and passed that test. But the German counterparts who were there, they were so familiar with the thing. And in the lecture, they were just asking questions and even challenging the professors. And I asked myself where I was here. Yeah. So I came back and passed it. And when I finished the master's degree, I said, if I have something to do, it would be to make this subject essential in the Cameroonian system. And the first step would be to introduce it in the examination so that people will be forced to learn it. Because as somebody said, Cameroonians don't see the importance of something. So you have to force them even for them to, to understand it. And then patriotism, we owe a lot to Cameroon, and I thought that if there's something I can contribute to my country's well-being or future, it will be to start with this. I, I, I mentioned this example of the book that we wrote. Imagine I went to the Ministry of Education to talk to the Secretary of State about this book. I told him that we came up with a syllabus, and this is a book that covers this syllabus. And the GC board asked us to come out with this book. Parents don't understand these things until the book is on the book list. So before I went to Cameroon, I spoke to the Secretariat, and I planned a, an audience with the Secretary of State, one Mr. Futsu, and I went to Cameroon. I had to meet him on the 23rd, 24th of March. I drove from Douala to Yaoundé, and when I entered his office, I was told that he went to the north, because he comes from there, and he had to go there because the CPDM is celebrating it's the 25th anniversary of the party. That was 24th of March, 2010. After having driven from Douala to Yaoundé, I stood in Yaoundé. I asked the secretary, when will he come back? They said, maybe in one week, and I had to fly the next three days. So um, I went to other offices too, where we tried to open the company, and I really found that there was lack of duty consciousness with our officials. I think you know this. Yeah. And there is bribery and corruption. We call it by name. Our system is so corrupt that you need to understand how to function inside. I don't encourage bribery and corruption as well. And um, there's so much bureaucracy. 
African time, you have an appointment with somebody, you go there, the person is not there. And he comes three hours later and tells you that, no, but he's punctual, it's okay, three hours, is okay. And then lack of transparency. Imagine that after I went there, the man was not there, and I left five of these books with the secretariat and wrote a big letter to him after I had explained to him that I was coming. And uh, I spoke to somebody who was heading the inspectorate, and they told me that for this book to go to the book list, I should bring about three million. <laughs> Are you hearing me? So I told him that but we have done so much to, to come up with this book. Eh? And both of us are experts. We came up with the syllabus. My business was not to write the book to earn money, but I was told that to make this thing go fast, we should come up with uh, teaching material. So I, don't, I cannot pay you three million on all this job I'm doing for this nation. And they said, okay, then go, we'll see what to do. Until today, that book is not on the book list. Book list came out, and there were no books there. Maybe there was one book from Britain. Now, what I said is that I would not bribe to, to change something in Cameroon, but I will go another way. We went to the mission schools. The mission schools usually they come out with their own book list. We submitted this book to them and told them that this was the Slabos book. And this book is being used by, I think, nearly all the Catholic secondary schools and all the Pretoria secondary schools. And that's enough. From, and the, when the results came out, they saw the schools that passed where <laughs> the, the government schools were with, yes, they used this book. And now maybe some of them are struggling to, to look for the real material. But what I'm trying to show you is that it is, it is not so easy to go through with some projects in Cameroon. You have to think and then uh, see what, you know, what they call in Germany, give a and medu. Here is 20 minutes, you go feel the form and go there, it is done. In Cameroon, it can take you one year. And then, if it's possible, give a power of attorney. That someone should be there who can sign papers for you if you are not there, if you have to sign the papers. Um, Cameroon has many universities today that have been created, new ones. I mentioned the Catholic University in Bamenda, in Boya. In our own state universities, we have increasing number of faculties that offer engineering courses and medicine courses. So um, it would be nice, as I said, if we as experts, both in engineering and medicine, look at this as a, as a chance to go and impart knowledge and develop a business in parallel. You'll be shooting uh, two beds with one stone. And uh, those who are interested, I have, some, I have some work going on with some of these universities already. Those who are interested, they can contact me through email directly and I can give them direct contact. Sometimes it's difficult to get the right people in those schools. And in summary, um, we tried to introduce computer science at the GC and we succeeded. It is now being tested and this will help Cameroonians in future because we heard that ICT is very essential in all domains of life. And for those who are coming abroad to study, they will not have the, the problems that we had before because they already have it in their background.